Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Illusion Fox Gaming. How are all of you? Hopefully you're all doing well. Capital idea, Cryo is still digesting a rather hefty portion of food for thought. Well, that's given me much to mull over. I feel as though we're one step closer to understanding the form's true motives. And the mysteries of life itself for good measure. It's funny, I came here with the intent of expressing my gratitude. Only to leave more indebted than ever. Ever before. I have a feeling this fr his friendship and support will be a great boon to us in days to come. And on that note, let's head back to the Annex. Perhaps on the way, you could better acquaint yourself with Qui Alipo as a scholar suggested. While well, I share our findings with Raha. Ah, welcome back. From what I hear, your trip to the studio proved most educational. While you're away, I received word from our fellow, fellow scions. As expected, news of the warding scales was met with much joy. Preparations are now underway to bring the leadership of the Grand Company of Eorzea and the Eastern Alliance together to determine a way forward. Our friends have asked that we bring the scales in our possession to Limsa Lominsa. So the time has come for us to go on the offensive? It's too early to say for certain, but that does seem to be the way the ones are blowing. I, for one, can think of no reason to oppose such a plan, but let's see what awaits us in Veilbrand. Let's start by getting the scales out of storage. Give me a hand, would you, Astinian? Phew! I didn't realize those crates were so heavy. I shouldn't complain, though. Verta and the alchemists of the great work put their soul, heart and soul into each and every one of these scales. So you must treat them with the utmost care. Are you not coming with us? As much as I'd like to escape the forum's watchful gaze, I have little choice but to stay behind. We're already on thin ice, and if I, in my capacity as our official representative, were found to be consorting with foreign powers, well, you can imagine how that would go. I shall remain here, and do my utmost to avoid ruffling any more feathers as I await word from Master Matoya and our other allies. 
With luck, we'll soon have good news of our own to share. The tide is about to turn, I can feel it. To Limsa Lominsa. As I was told to expect you, as you may or may not be aware, the Admirals at present entertain the Elder Seeds here and the Sultana. Three of the most powerful women in the world in one room. Do you need a moment to repair, or shall I show you to them? Eh, that could be scary, but we'll go. Ooh. My apologies for calling you from Charlie at such short notice. On the contrary, we are honored and grateful and pleasantly surprised to be joined by such esteemed company. It was only right that discussion be conducted in person. We are locked in a war of attrition. Our forces struggle to contain the threat posed by the towers. It's only a matter of time before we are overwhelmed. Victory will only be claimed through a decisive action, and we have taken the initiative to set the wheels in motion. It is reassuring to learn we are all in accord. But I might ask what you, your plan entails. It hinges entirely on the warning scales and our ability to utilize their potential to the fullest. During your time with Charlie and the Allied nations have been engaged on separate fronts with no end in sight. To make matters worse, a surge in abductions of Cobalt, Sahag, and Ixol, and Anata, Nanta have given rise to an increasing number of primals as well. But your triumphant rise at Han has given us cause to hope once more. The time has come to free ourselves of this menace. It is you, the signs of the Seventh Dawn, who have shown us the way. While the bulk of our forces will continue to hold the Tlaforoi at bay, we will dispatch our finest to strike at the enemy's heart, Garlemald. These brave few will be the ill sabard contingent. To think such progress is made so in so short a span. Its objectives are twofold. The first is to provide aid to the people of Garlemald. <coughs> As previously reported, countless Imperial soldiers and civilians have been tempted, robbed of their free will. They serve the Telophoroi's every whim without a question. They too are victims. It is our duty to deliver them from their suffering, not for strategic or political gain, but because it's the right thing to do. 
I do not ask that we set aside the de decades of conflict and conquest that we simply choose to forgive and forget. I ask only that in choosing to remember who we do not also forsake our compassion and morality, for without that there can be no reconciliation, only death without end. Aye, on that we can all agree. Our second objective is the colossal tower that Thancred and Orange observed in the capital. Though its purpose remains unclear, there's reason to believe that the smaller spires are merely a precursor of what's yet to come. Until the Tower of Zot was toppled, we'd failed to make any headway. Though the same could be said of the Telophoroi, they're certainly in no rush to press further into our lands. I'd wager the spire's primary purpose is to divide and keep us occupied while they work towards our annihilation. This would appear to be substantiated by Ishtola's analysis of the tower's influence on ethereal currents. Based on our observations inside the Tower of Zot, the spires siphon ether from the, from the land, consuming it to maintain their form. However, they draw forth far more than is required for this task alone. The excess of ether remains unaccounted for, but we can be sure it is not being harnessed for our benefit. It wouldn't surprise me in the le least if it was being redirected to the larger spire in the capital. There's a logic in that, regardless, once we have uncovered the truth. We'll bring their schemes crashing down along with their infernal towers. That's all well and good, but what would you have us do? I assume it's more than handing over the scales and being on our way. We want you and your scales to join the Ilsebard contingent. Consider it an official request from both the Grand Company of Eorzea and the Eastern Alliance. Do you accept? Perhaps you should be the one to answer that. Couldn't have put it better myself. Ishola, Thinker, and Nurinjay have already pledged their support and are on their way to meet the rest of the contingent. They were positive you would come up to the same decision as they did. Luckily for all involved, their prediction was correct. Once you have delivered the warding scale Salamigo, the contingent will embark on its journey to Ilsebard. Grabon and Lord Americ are overseeing preparations. Suggest so you make yourselves known upon arrival. Pack warm clothing, furs, and the like. Without it, the cold will do you in before the Telophorus so much as draw steel. As for us, we'll keep the enemy busy while you're gone. They're not the only ones who can create a diversion. Now go safe in the knowledge of yours who will be as you left it. Or better, upon your return.
Ah, the Wanderers return. You've been busy bringing down a tower and producing the keys to destroying the rest of them? You should be proud. Those warding skills of yours are what's made this whole venture possible. Will you and Lady Imeric be leading the contingent? Regrettably, no. Our role is to organize the various delegations into a cohesive unit. Once we have all seen you all off, it's back to our respective posts. We dare not neglect our, neglect our duties for too long, lest our defensive efforts fall into disarray. And just between us, there was a fair amount of opposition to the formation of the Osobard contingent. The very suggestion that this we know some of our finest troops behind enemy lines surrender aid unto the Garleans has made me rather unpopular in certain quarters. I can't please them all. Sadly not, though I do my best. Truth be told, I'd much rather be at our, your side charging into the fray. Alas, I have battles of my own to fight, where words may serve me better than any blade. I hate to say it, but Lord Americ's troubles smear my own. For the time being, the best we can offer you is the peace of mind from knowing Eorzea's in safe hands. As you fight the good fight, Nilsabard, I and the other commanders will do what we can to convince the naysayers that our cause is just. Thank you, both of you. We meet again. Word of your exploits traveled quickly, from what I gather. The protective talismans you obtained led to the formation of this expeditionary force. My contribution on this occasion is but a minor one, that being the information I have shared with Maxima for the sake of the people of Garlemald. May the fates be on your side. So you're not coming with us? Strange, I thought you'd have a stake in this. I do. The Talafori have laid waste to my homeland and enslaved my people. But, though every motive of my being cries for vengeance, I cannot be the one to deliver it. My presence alone would place the entire mission in jeopardy. I stand accused of murdering Emperor Varus and plunging Garlemald into chaos. Were I to travel with the Osobard contingent, it would give my countrymen ample cause to question our motives. Conversely, those who believe me innocent may instead celebrate the return of a former legatus and attempt to raise me into a position of leadership, further destabilizing the region and complicating the contingent's mission. Whether I am branded a villain or hailed as a hero, I would only hinder your efforts. For what it's worth, you have my gratitude. You and your comrades have the strength and courage to deliver my countrymen. I am certain of it. In light of Gaius's rather unique circumstances, I instead will assume the role of your guide. Though I may have defected for political reasons, I, my love for Gollumald endures. I would stop at nothing to protect her and her people. Well said. I, might I ask you to escort our friends inside? The other members of the Ilsebar contingent are gathered in the Royal Palace. I shall inform them of your arrival, so please make your way inside as soon as you're ready.
Fine by me. I haven't seen you in a hot minute. <laughs> ah, what do I say to that? Um, we 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 didn't.
didn't say anything. Nope, nope, we're not here. We didn't hear it. How did you pronounce that? Oh, okay. <laughs> She's like, wait, what?
Can you blame them? Well said. Besides the delegates assembled here, the Emolja and several other tribes offer to send troops of their own. Unfortunately, due to their physiology, many would struggle simply to survive in the harsh climate of, the Il of Il Sabard. They'd also likely, also likely prove tempting targets for abduction by the Tlaferoi. All things considered, they can be better aid the cause by bolstering our defenses in Eorzea. Though their eagerness to do more what has been noted. We few shall have to suffice. Ere we embark, we must distribute the warding scales to our comrades. Care to do the honors? Yes. So these are the famed warding scales. Enough for me and my men, I see. 
Under normal circumstances, I would not be allowed to travel outside the Twelves' wood. The Elder Seats here, however, has granted me special permission. She has been bid me lend my magics to the people of Garlemald while learning all I can of their ways. In so doing, I will come closer to understanding myself and my place in the world, or so she says. I say it is past time our allies benefited from the power at a seed seer's disposal. Some bemoan that we hide our light under a bushel, and I intend to address that criticism. I hear you've got something for us. Ah, them scales everyone's been talking about. Pretty little things, ain't they? I reckon they'll be worth a kill or two when this is all over, but we'll hold on to them for now. And one more thing. I know what you're think thinking. Why didn't they send uh, Einzar instead? Fuckered if I know. All the Admiral and Captain Hilfier told me was they need someone to help safeguard the future, and here I am. Can't say they haven't gotten they haven't got a sense of humor. Of course, some of you might be wondering what a good pirate is on dry land in the middle of the sodden snow of all places. Well, me and my crew will do whatever needs doing, so let's set sail, or however they say and goes on airships. That said, warning scales I spy? Not that I would know what they'd look like. Wow, look at these. Even a layman like me can tell they're bursting with the ether. All the better to fend off the tempering waves. Is that right? the right term? Anyway, these will give us one thing to wor one less thing to worry about, which just leaves the other mountain of whatever else is waiting for us in Garlemald. Only one way to find out, eh? And never or not, I'd I'd march through all seven hells if it gave me a chance to put Zenos back in the grave where he belongs. Warning seals for this guarding delegation, I take it. Many thinks these talismans may prove to be the deciding factor in the battles to come. I find myself conflicted by this foray into Garlemald. Sent by the Empire to infiltrate Ishgard, only throw in my lot with those whose secrets I was supposed to be stealing. And now I lead a mission to save the countrymen I betrayed? But that is doubtless why I was chosen by Lord Imeric. He would have me put my extensive knowledge and former ties to good use. I will not disappoint him. For the future of Vishgard, Garlemald, and the world at large, I will lead us to victory. We heard it would be cold in Garlemald, so we came prepared. Oh, the talismans? We are to keep these close at all times, yes? I will see that no one just misplaces theirs. Um, before I forget, I have a message from Heen. In distant lands, in times of strife, together, stand, together, fight. In darkness shines the light of life. I hope I have done his words justice. Doma, like much of Ith Othard, has been plagued by the towers. Yet, while he could not be here, he wished to express his shared conviction. Heen and Yugiri labor without rest to unite the people, and with their aid, will we keep the enemy at bay. And we of the SEP and the Eastern Alliance will pay their efforts by ending this war. Do you have a warning scale for me too? Thank you for this and for going to such incredible lengths for the sake of my people. Though I have little to offer in return, I would impart some advice, if I may. You have been told by many to wear the cold of Isabard, and I cannot stress enough that this is no token warning. I will be serving specially made warming tinctures courtesy of the Alchemist Guild, but understand that they are no substitute for proper protection. I leave the provisioning of said protection to your, your discretion. Now let us proceed to the Alamegan Quarter. While you make your final provisions, I will have pilots ready the airships. And here we go. This is our last chance to make ready before we set forth. You didn't worry about Orange and I. We still have what we wore on in Garland Mall before. Asidian claims to be quite warm and toasted beneath his armor, and since he, 
He spent a fair bit of time up north recently as well. I have no reason to doubt his words. Most of the others will be borrowing Grand Company stock. The rest of you could do likewise. I suppose, provided you're not only overly concerned with style. Not to put a fine point on it, but wouldn't be seen dead in one of these those individ ridiculous overcoats. If only I had the time to find something to my liking. Is that the cry of signs in need of a tailor I hear? Ooh, are the scions going to get a new look? B -b 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 ow <laughs> I have my ways. Oh, yes, indeed. You thought you could sneak off to Ilsebard without telling me? Ah, nothing escapes my notice. Now, you will wear these garments I made for you, whether you like it or not. You never cease to amaze me. But why do you, you need a new outfit as well? Wait, are you coming with us? What? No, of course not, silly. It's in the name of fashion. Rather than pursue the highest quality fashion. Besides, how can I expect others to wear my creations if I've never worn them myself? Eh, fair point. Ah, but I'd have, have one other thing to share. Argmus and Blumwida have finally returned from assignments in faraway lands. They'll be staying at the Rising Stones for a while to keep an eye on events throughout Eorzea. Since they'll be running things back at headquarters, I was wondering if I could lend a hand in Charlian? Oh, why not? You can keep Cryo Company in the Baldesian Annex. Yes, we'd love to have you there. And I heard Amgris and Blumwida did a fine job carrying on in your, our stead while we were lying comatose. With them in charge of the Rising Stones, we've nothing to worry about. My thoughts exactly. Also, while I'm confident you won't go collapsing again, because a certain someone who shall remain nameless isn't in a position to transfer your souls to another world, if anything similarly disastrous were to happen, I'll be well positioned to do something about it. Anyway, I've got a few things to take care of, and then I'll make my way to Charlian. I really do hope these new clothes are enough to keep you warm in Garlemald. It's not much, but it's the only one thing I can do for you, other than pray for your safe return. Which I will, every day. Let's not keep the contingent waiting any longer. Here are your winter woolies, handcrafted by yours truly. Eh, not bad, but not really to my liking. Fans out too much towards the bottom. Taru is desperately trying to retain her composure as she prepares to see you off on another perilous journey. I'm told the, the airship pilot has been sent to meet you. Ah, oh, there he is. Alright, this is where we go our separate ways. Do be careful, won't you? Eh, I'll do what I can. It's an honor to finally meet you. We of the Garland Island Works will be ferrying you and your contingent across the mountains and into Garlemald. For many of us, it'll be something of a homecoming. Our illustrious founder was only our most notable Imperial defector. For that reason, the company is committed to the success of this expedition. Our resources are at your disposal. If there's aught we might do to be of a further assistance, please do not hesitate to ask. If you're ready to depart, I will ready the engines. Well, let's go.
wait a minute. You're, you guys are from Ishgard. If you guys are freezing, we're all fucked. I mean, seriously, look at Mandalay. You, you would imagine that from the people from uh, Limsa, not... Very true. Oh, we will most certainly do that.
I going to actually get a play here? Assuming there's nothing else you wish to confirm, we may commence the mission as soon as you're ready. So we're playing Stankrid. So what are my abilities? Bewilderment Bomb, Nubla, Solid Barrel Combo.
is a crap. How do I deal with that? Shit. Not having much luck. My timing sucks, apparently. There we go, there we go. I was expecting more fireworky, not small explosions. Bad poppers.
Uh huh. Sure you will. Yeah, because... That all they got? Well, better late than never.
You're lagging here, Sadu. Ooh, I was starting to get a little worried there. Just a little worried. Well, glad I can make a difference.
In spite of the obstacles we face, our plan proceeds apace. Just a little further and we will reach the capital itself. Still, we mustn't get ahead of ourselves. As soon as the camp has been made fit for purpose, we are to discuss a course of action for Lucia. Would you mind asking Ishtola and Graha to join us in that building to the northeast of camp? Alice and I will meet you there. I'm meeting, yes. I'll make my way over once my head is cleared. In truth, I've been feeling all sorts since we arrived. The air is thick with a palpable aura of malevolence. malevolence. Tis a monstrous tower on the horizon. Jagged, hideous, unholy. Even at this distance, its presence, presence is overwhelming. Much like the sensation I felt in the Tower of Zot, only far more terrifying. Ether flows unceasingly towards it converging into a swirling mass of unfathomable power. For a blessing, the chill, constant chill in the air is helping to anchor my senses in the air now. Tell the others I shall be with you in a few moments. While I'm thinking about it. You'll please know most of the tempered have been quartered inside the nearby buildings and receiving treatment as we speak. I do, however, feel no small amount of guilt for commandeering civilian homes. The occupants may be long gone, but everything is exactly as they left it. Considering the length of time that has clearly passed since, one would expect to find them ransacked. Strangely, there are no signs of anything having been stolen. It's possible that everyone fled at the first sign of trouble. Though it seems to be, to me, they left far too many useful possessions behind. I, although there is no conclusive evidence, I strongly suspect they were tempered. <sighs> Sorry, I was merely thinking aloud. You mentioned a meeting. I will make my way there. Thank you for informing the others of our meeting. When everyone is here, we will begin. Friend just shared that they are doing amazingly well uh, in uh, their efficiency at uh, at rating. It's just, damn, they are good.
Let's see. Just a moment here. God be good. If it's this cold with Taru's clothing, I dread to think how we'd fare without it. I must remember to thank her when we next we meet. It makes me realize, too, that while pe the people of Garlemont have spent their whole lives in conditions like these, even they'd be hard-pressed to survive away from the warmth of their homes. If there are any survivors, we must find them, and quickly. <sighs> it 
Emmeline is as usual, milling about aimlessly. What, ho has been given something to do, have you? As it happens, I too have been ordered to make myself useful. Sounds like a rather tall order. Since you asked, we're to scour the Eblin Rhyme for survivors. What? Wander around ice fields on the off chance you'll find someone? You'd take forever to finish the job without the benefit of my expertise, or more specifically, my tel telescope. Come, friends, I know just the spot to begin our search. I'll probably regret this, but we may as well humor him. I'm missing something here. Sorry, just a moment. I spy with my little telescope a massive sheep thing, or maybe it's a cow. Not what we're after, either way. Is there an ether corn? Oh no, just a wind sprite. Hmm, other than that, it's all snow, 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 but lo, what do I see over yon hillock? There's no mistaking it, that's a girl. A survivor, show me. Over there, behind that tree. It looks like she's running away from something, though surely not us. She wouldn't even know we're here unless she had a telescope like mine. All I can tell is that she's wearing a pale green dress. A rather fetching one, at that. She'll be long gone by the time we get anywhere near, but we should be able to follow her footprints. I'll let Lucia know the, where we're heading. Oh, and take these warming tinctures with you. The poor girl must be chilled to the bone, if not on the verge of freezing to death. That's actually very thoughtful. 
Thank you, but won't you need some for yourself? No, no, I'll be fine. As a man of chivalry, my honor demands I do no less. And lest we forget, the very reason we're here is to protect those in need. Now go, and Godspeed. We're getting closer, I'm sure of it. First, we thought she got into the building, but the door doesn't look to have been opened in some time. She might still be nearby, so we'll keep looking around here. Then again, it's possible that she ran right past this place. Would you mind searching up ahead?
Still in one piece. Who are you? Stay back. This house is packed with explosives. Take another step and I'll blow this place sky high. Please, we just want to talk. I'm off no. This is my sister, Elise, and our good friend, Illusion. We have no intention of hurting or taking anything from you or anyone else. I give you my word. We and our comrades have come to provide aid to the people of Garlemald. Aid? You savages are, are the ones responsible for all this. You did this to us. We didn't, I promise you. One of the other reasons we came was to find out what happened here, in fact. The Telophori are the ones to blame. They're the ones who laid waste to Garlemald, and they keep, and they won't stop until they've destroyed the entire world. They're the enemy, our enemy. On our way, we encountered Imperial soldiers who had been made their their thralls. Those poor souls are now in our care, and we are striving to cure them of their affliction. You're the first person we've met who hasn't already who wasn't already enslaved. How were you able to escape the Tlaferai's influence? Are there any others like you? Sorry, I don't mean to overwhelm you. Let's start with introductions. Can you tell me your name? Uh, my name's Lucina. As far as how I've managed to stay sane, I've been asking myself the same question ever since that night. And the roar, that terrible, terrible roar. And then the screams. I was screaming too, I think. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Then came the silence. Everything was still. It was like waking up from a nightmare. I thought that maybe the fighting had stopped, so I stepped outside. If your hells are real, I saw that one that day. I ran past my friends, people I'd known all my life, eyes vacant dead, staring at the sky. Others were mad and violent. I saw them struggle with soldiers, but didn't stay to watch. I fled as far as my legs would take me. Do you have family here? Is this your home? their home? No. This is Victor Spoils, a mansion for retired soldiers, or it was, but now me and my me and a few others are um, borrowing it. As for the explosives, I was making that up. I just wanted to keep everyone else safe, and I didn't know if you were if you were the truth is our supplies are running low. You said you're here to help, can you? Of course, whatever assistance we can provide, we will. Thank you. I better tell the others first, though. Wait here. Thanks is everyone. Lucina says that you can be trusted, but these are desperate times. We'd be fools to let foreign troops into our home. Having said that, were you to provide us with means of heating the place as a sign of goodwill, perhaps we could take you at your word. If that is too much to ask, then leave us to be. 
Time to put my firewood gathering skills to use. Could you provide the spark with a little magic, Alice say? We'll have a fire burning in no time. May we build it under that gazebo? The Oh, you mean the bower? Yes, yes, do as you will. Let me click on the that 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 Hmm, sorry, I was I'm still finding it hard to come to terms with all that's happened. Now that you're here, though, I'm hoping things might change for the better. You know, I've worked up quite a sweat from all that running about, so I'll leave space around the fire for the others. As you can tell, they're in far worse state than me. We weren't, we were planning to look for somewhere warmer or with more food. But they're not going anywhere until we nurse them back to health, which I don't know how to do. Is there anything you can do to help them? I can treat their frostbite and their wounds, but it will take time for the fire to do its work. Now would be a good occasion to make use of Emmeline's tinctures, the one that can warm the body from the inside out. Wouldn't you make sure everyone gets one? The numbness is getting subsided, though. I suspect once the fire dies, it will return with a vengeance. Warming teacher? I've never heard of such a thing. No harm in trying. But tell me, have you heard of the odd of the city? Though calling it that seems absurd after what's happened. It's nothing but ruins now. The few buildings still standing offer no more than meager protection from wind and snow. Food production, water purification, the magic of the sand dust has come to a grinding halt. What Machina that remains operational cannot be run for lack of ceruleum. Of course, ceruleum gins is full of the stuff for all the good it does us. No one here knows the first thing about extraction or refinement. All is well, yes. Never better. Oh, what sweet libation is this? Is it poisoned by any chance? It was a joke, a joke! <laughs> if I laughed, tis that I may not weep, so said the poet, and alas, my tears would freeze on my cheek ere they fell. We are the blessed damned to bear witness to the fall of the great empire while our brethren lie dead, or live on as puppets of flesh. First came the war, then came the roar, when no morning came, Garlemald was no more. In a cacophony of gunfire, explosions, and scream was our beloved capital raised to the ground. From the rubble rose the disheveled remnants, their lavish finery caked in ash as they shuffled mindlessly towards the palace, each bearing a fragment of stone or metal an offering, perhaps, to the architect of our destruction. A hopeful few tried to reason with the deranged, only to be beaten for their kindness. 
But I knew better than to plead with the horde. I fled with my health, if not my conscience preserved. Now I wait with my fellow cowards for our final judgment. What do you want? Hmm, a tincture. May as well drink it, I suppose. This? It's a radio. Don't have them where you come from, I take it? We seem to listen to messages sent by others, even over great distances. There are different types, but this model is by far the most popular. Made with quality components, crafted with the finest ore sourced from Locus Amanus, it is. Not all that useful since the capital fell into ruin. The people at the broadcasting station must have either fled or ended up like all the others. Because all we've been hearing is the same music being played over and over and over and over again. Home beyond the horizon, an ode to the brave men and women sent to reclaim our ancestral homeland of Locus Amanus. We may have found an empire in these frozen wastes, but we always hope to take back what was once ours. Tis a solemn reminder that though we must suffer a great hardship, better days will surely come. Despite everything, I believe that Emperor Varus yet lives, and that he speaks to us through our radios. It was a cutting strategy faking his murder. He must have foreseen this catastrophe and chosen to conceal himself, that he may one day make his triumphant return. Yes, yes, I'm sure, but Emperor Varus would not be defeated so easily. Hmm... What's that? So this is what you gave the others. Thank you. I'll save it for later. Actually, I have a few things to ask you. Are you part of the group staying in Laterum? I saw Legatus for... Julia's troops have heading towards the Magna Glaciers a few days ago. Are they the ones you encountered? Camp Broken Glass, you call it. And Jill and her men are all there now? So how did you reach the Magna Glaciers? Did you cross the mountains on foot? Airships, and there might be a way to... Lucina, where is everyone? Is something the matter? A voice from inside you say, You must be imagining things. Everyone's out here. Perhaps a baby Al Almasi has found its way into the house. It wouldn't be the first time. Without the soldiers to scare them off, wild animals have been roaming around close to the settlements. Some have been known to attack people, too. I I've just had an idea. If you and yours are strong enough to defeat a Legatus, then surely a few beasts shouldn't pose a threat. If you have a mind to continue helping us, perhaps you could head to the other side of the lake. There's a small group of t tappers living there, people whose job was to extract cerulean. They'll still do, from what we can tell. I've already tried asking if they would share their fuel with us, but they're not willing to give it away. They want food in exchange. Lots of food. And that's something we don't have and can't get on our own. On top of that, to even reach their den, we'd have to make our way past all those creatures. Would you be willing to go in our place? We only need, need enough cerulean to last until the others are strong enough to travel to your camp. The other still stands, that is. Oh, and I don't expect you to give up your own supplies, but there might be another way to pay the tappers.
Thank you so much. To reach Tapper's Den, you'll have to cross the lake. The ice is thick enough to support a person's weight, but if you'd rather not take the risk, you'll need to take the long way around. Finding the entrance can be a bit tricky, too, so it's easier to just look for someone standing guard outside. However you decide to head there, please be careful. Who goes there? How did you find us? What do you mean I stand out like a sore thumb? The purebloods over at Victor's Spoils haven't given away our location. You never have found us. Those stuck-up arseholes thought they could come waltzing in here demanding Cerulean with nothing to offer in return. Looks like the boot's on the other foot now. The cap was gone to shite. So the George sent you to negotiate. I know your game's so sort of. They think we'll give up an intimidation. They've got another thing coming. There you are. Just after you left, the senior asked me to go and catch up with you in case you needed a hand. Someone must have left slip that I have a little experience in transporting barrels of ceruleum. So this is Tapper's Den. Well then, after you. Who are you? What happened to the guards? Yours and rebels are here to save the people of Garlemald? That doesn't make any god's damn sense. Why in the hell would you pass up this chance to put those Imperial bastards to the sword? Let me guess, none of you are Garlean. You were brought here from other lands? Oh, 
Garabania, Ancia, Bosja, Dalmasca, to name but a few. Some dragged here against their will, others fed bollocks about better life, all put to work extracting ceruleum. All given the esteemed title of On, placed firmly on the bottom rung of the ladder. But the old hierarchy means nothing in the new Garlemald, says we. But the only thing they've escaped more or less on scales is really engines, still sustaining us, even with our paymasters out of the picture. We hear you're experts in drawing up ceruleum from the bottom of the lake, but how can you do that if it's frozen over? Ah, oh, wouldn't you like to know? Trade secrets, I'm afraid. At any rate, it's not as if Cerulean was used for much these days. What with the city in ruins, we take enough to power our our heaters and save the surplus for later. And though it helps stave off the cold, it does sud all about our hunger unless we can trade it away. Speaking of which, be sure to tell your contingent we've got Cerulean by the barrel full. If they're interested, we'll exchange it for whatever provisions they're willing to spare. We can certainly ask, but if you're all free to go now, why carry on living here? Free to go? Go where? If we manage to get back to our homelands, there'd be nothing left for us, thanks to the Empire. The knowledge and skills we acquired working here would be practically useless outside of Garlemald. So we're staying for the time being. As long as there's a need for Cerulean, we'll find a way to get by. Even if Garlemald, as we knew it, is gone for good. Gone for good? Regardless of what ill... Uh, what the Ilsebar contingent does for the people of Garlemald, the Empire itself is already a thing of the past. For many, that would be a cause for celebration, while for others, their whole way of life will have been turned upside down. <laughs> After all the atrocities committed in the Empire's name, perhaps it is for the best that it is consigned to history. But what are the ordinary people, their lives, their stories, should they be forgotten too? Hmm, I suppose there'll be plenty of time to ponder that later. For now, let's see about getting them some ceruleum. Jarek is amenable to making a deal. So, you've come seeking ceruleum, have you? What? Those purebloods up at Victor Spoils sent you? Turn to their enemies for help? They must be desperate then, I'd thought. Then again, Lucina's got her sister to think about. A sister, but we only saw Lucina and th three men. It's possible she died from whatever was ailing her. If she needed treatment, I doubt there'd be any way to get it, get it around here. I may have refused Lucina at first, thinking she'd come back with something to exchange, but I can spare them a bottle's worth of ceruleum. Consider a reward for introducing me to the rest of your contingent. Be sure to send them our way, you hear? I can't for the life of me th think why Lucina would keep her sister a secret from us. But we're going to ask about that after we've delivered this ceruleum. Come on, let's hurry back.
This isn't right. It's too quiet. I would have thought Alphano would still be treating them by f the fire, but they're nowhere to be seen. I'll look inside the house while you search outside. They can't have gone far. They asked me, asked me to help carry supplies. When I followed them back here, they attacked me. Caught me off guard, forced me to defend myself. I fear they fared rather worse than me. You can't fool us. We know. We know what, they're about, what you're about. And what's that? Vultures, that's what you are. Waiting in the wings for us to show weakness. Then in you swoop. Here to help, what rot, all ploy to make us lower our guard. Let you in, put ourselves at your mercy, put us in chains, steal our lands, get your revenge. You're wrong, that's not what any of us want. Save the arguments for later, we've got a bigger problem. I found empty medicine bottles in a bed that was still warm. It's true, Lucina was hiding her sick sister inside the house. But now, there's no sign of either of them. What are they? Where did they go? Where are they? Where did they go? Away from you and yours, and if you think I'll tell you you're a fool, I'd never give up my people. We're trying to help them, you idiot. Her sister's ill, the empty bottles prove it, so the medicine ran out. Or she put it in her pockets to make it easier to carry. Or to avoid the sound of clinking glass. There are beasts everywhere. How could you let them go alone? To protect them from you. You invade our homeland. Taint it with the same sorcery used to slay our countrymen. A garland should sooner die than suffer the insult. Better for them to flee, keep their purity intact, than be corrupted by your vile magics. We were waiting, waiting for a chance to free them, since the moment you arrived. This is getting us nowhere. I cannot say how Lucina and her sister will react when we find them, but find them we must. Go on without me, both of you. I will first need to tend to my injuries and theirs. I will join you in the search after. All right, be careful. We'll do our best to find them quickly. There's only one path out of here, so that's where we'll start. Two sets of fresh footprints, young women judging by the size. This is definitely them. Come on. The trail stops at the frozen lake. Perhaps they chose this route so as not to leave footprints? 
I can't think of any other reason. Look at this place. It's crawling with beasts. And I can only imagine how hard it is, must be for her ailing sister to cross the ice. We could really do with Alphino's help, but we can't afford to wait for him. Let's split up and look for clues. This is a rather big circle to be. Looking through. Hmm. That might be a good indica indicator. God damn it.
There must be something we could have done, but what? Should we never have come here? Would they still be alive if we hadn't? Hard to say. Alphano's resolve may be shaken, but he has not forgotten his duty. We've already caused enough harm here. Let's return to the camp before we cause any more. As for those inside the house, we should send someone to take care of them, someone who isn't us. All we can do for now is make our report to Lucia and do everything in our power to prevent further tragedy. So let's linger here no more. Come. Alice and Alphano tell me they have finished their preliminary search for survivors, but refrained from saying much more than that. Clearly they are reluctant to provide details. Might I ask for your account?
What?
You will be received as invited guests, and so I urge you to observe proper social etiquette and conduct yourselves accordingly. Your safe return takes precedence above all else. Remember this. Thanquid in particular will be worried sick if you're gone too long. May the Fury watch over and keep you. Are you and the children ready? I will explain the route once we are outside the, your camp. If anyone attempts to follow us, you, we will judge it an act of hostility. We will not hesitate to take appropriate measures. I expect nothing less. You have our full cooperation. All right, this is far enough. Listen carefully. We heard over that hill and then follow the road until we reach Liminal Station 4. Children in the lead, I want you where I can see you. We do have names, you know. I'm Alan Say, and he's Alfno. And last but not least, there's Illusion. Illusion, where have I heard that before? No matter, Alfno and Alice Say will watch the road ahead while we bring up the rear. I wasn't lying about there being many dangers, so you're to run, not saunter. Run towards the station. If you even think about going for your weapon... The deal's off. Should any creatures bar the way, we go around them. Sorry, can't stop and chat. Gotta keep going. This is it. The first stop, that is. Good. It looks like your friends knew better than to follow us. Are these your headquarters? No, we're stopping here so I can check for pursuers. Since it appears you've kept your side of the bargain, we can carry on. North of the station is Regio Domorum, one of the main residential areas, or at least it was. The afflicted roam the streets in packs. They'll tear us to shreds if given the chance. Keep close, no wandering off. Understood? From here, we'll be heading northeast, keeping to the left of the railway. While the route itself is straightforward, getting past the hordes unseen is anything but. Keep your weapon at the ready. They would attack their own countrymen? Aye, they spare their own, but slaughter the rest without hesitation. Though we'll try to avoid detection, the chances of sneaking by completely unnoticed are slim at best. I will lead the way, but in the event we are seen, you are to fight them off. Those two will follow us, provided they can refrain from drawing their weapons. While I doubt they would be foolish enough to stab their guide in the back, I will not take it that chance. With that said, let us proceed.
I see why your comrades chose you. Julius, our contingent has a cure for the afflicted, or tempered as we call them. Your people need to be taken into custody that we may administer this treatment, but they would eventually regain their sanity. Is that so? For all I know, your treatment would simply force them to forsake one master for another. As far as I and my legion are concerned, they are no longer our people. They are beyond saving. Those who thought differently and tried to reason with them were butchered for their bleeding hearts. Come, we have to keep moving. Looks like we're not being followed. We will continue onward. I meant what I said. These people deserve only death. I saved my hand before only I'll desire to remain undiscovered. And that is still the higher priority. We should continue to avoid any unnecessary con confrontations. Keep following the railway. Wait, I passed him right by because I was trying to do something. Not what I meant to click on, but oh well. Look at what they've become. Would you still stand there and claim that they can be cured? Those exposed to a vast quantity of primals the ether may suffer severe corruption. Even through treatment, such victims are beyond salvation. Then you admit, now that you have seen these monstrosities for yourself, perhaps you'll think twice before speaking of a cure. And, uh, I mean, it, it's more of rehabilitation. And only works on those not so physically deformed.
Wait, what the hell? I walked right by him. Wasn't even paying too much attention. We're almost there. You have kept your side of the agreement, so I will keep mine this way. This is ter Tertium, one of Garlemo's largest stations. It now serves as our headquarters. I've already sent the twins ahead, and I'll be with you soon, so wait for me at the bottom of the stairs. It's plain to see why they chose this as their base of operations. They could have done a lot worse, even so I imagine it's not the easiest place to live. Indeed, and if Julius was willing to make the perilous journey to Camp Broken Glass in search of food, their own supplies must be all but exhausted. They may be shielded from the wind and snow, but still barely cold. Much like Victor Spoils, it must be a constant struggle to keep their people warm. Lower your voices. While you may be here as my guests, the others will not take kindly to your presence. My commander is in the locomotive over there. Not really wrong there, unfortunately.
I don't agree to this. <laughs> Probably because they're all the other shit we do. Trying to create a list of various uh, videos I got to make for various quests for dealing with beast tries. That's why, and I keep screwing things up, and that's why I keep flopping over. Okay, let's go speak to Julius over here. Has his orders, unpleasant though they may be. As per Lord Quintus's instructions, I am to supervise you during your time here in Tertium. Before you ask, no, I don't have a key or any other means to remove your collars, nor would I tell you if I did. If you try anything, you'll soon wish you hadn't. So do you truly intend to speak with the others, or is that merely a ruse? We're in no hurry to disobey Lord Quintus, if that's what you mean, or perhaps you doubt the wisdom of his decision. Do you as you will, but remember, I'll be watching. If I catch wind of you doing anything untoward, trying to trick our people into turning their coats and the like, those shock colors will be the least of your worries, understood? Though we're somewhat compromised, to put it lightly, let's not waste this opportunity. I suggest splitting up and learning what we can of their situation. Above all else, don't use magic of any sort. You, on the other hand, may go wherever you wish, even outside the camp. I know full well I couldn't stop you if I tried. 
But do not forget, if you do anything to endanger us or our interests, Alphno and I will say we'll pay the price. You came with Julius, didn't you? Well, whatever business brought you here, you'd best keep your hands off that eighth rate. It's deactivated, but I'd rather you didn't mess about with it. There are others throughout the city, built by Garleans, for Garleans. Could teleport you all over in the blink of an eye, provided there was a terminal nearby. These days, however, we use the Aether Rate's power to keep this place lit. Though that comes at the cost of its normal function. It's you. I, I served under Lord Gaius in the 14th Legion. I was there on the night the Praetorium fell. You and your adventurers, you killed them. My comrades, my friends, swept them aside in their dozens as though they were nothing to you. And maybe I am too, just another faithless enemy to cut down. But it won't be long until our countrymen return, until you get what you deserve. Mike my words. So good. I know who you are, the so-called champion of Yorzia. Come to gloat, have you? I'll wipe that smirk off your face by the blood of our fallen compatriots. I swear I'll... Ugh. Damn, tore the sutures. Of all the times, the worst of the lot within striking distance, I can't even muster the strength. Nor were the third bleeding us, we'd be the end of you. Virgilla's treachery nearly cost Lord Quintus his life, but we made our escape. Took shelter in a mansion, tended to the wounded as we prepared to strike back, and then... Night fell and we gathered around the radio, then the roar, the terrible roar. The capital was in chaos, but we were spared. If you can call this a mercy, mind intact but body broken, a soldier in name alone. I'd cut you down where you stand if I could, murderer. Did you learn anything of note? Then your findings are consistent with my own. Their plight is desperate indeed. The sick and injured are at greatest, greatest risk. Without warmth and proper nutrition, I fear they will soon perish. I realize there is precious little we can do for them at present, but I cannot bear to see them suffer. Please, will you help me tend to them? Who's there? My eyes. They, I can't see all that well. Ah, uh, thank you. The numbness has subsided a little. But I know I won't last much longer. You should look into the others who can still fight. Give them my ration. Me going hungry means someone else lives to see another day. So be it. At least I can still serve in that way. So those who met... You met fair no better. I was afraid you would say that. I know we were warned against meddling in their affairs, but we can't leave them like this. Perhaps we might gain permission to have a, a contingent deliver supplies. Quintus may have made his feelings on the matter quite clear, but even he must recognize they are not in a position to refuse help. Maybe Julius could persuade him, though we need to persuade Julius first. Well, well, seen enough. Julius, the people here have barely enough food and fuel to survive. Have you and the other soldiers been able to procure any more supplies? We've been scavenging provisions from the nearby houses. As most families keep kept, rather, some sort of way in the event they were snowed in. Still, going out and getting it is dangerous work, and we have a lot of mouths to feed. Fuel was the greater concern, though. We had some ceruleum set aside until it was stolen. 
We haven't identified the culprit. Could have been other refugees or one of the afflicted for all we know. Either way, we're down to the last dregs. Without the heating they need, those in poor health are only going to get worse instead of better. If it's really we need, our contingent has secured a ready supply. We can have some sent over. We will not accept your charity. If we can hold on a little longer, the situation is sure to change. Aye, everything will change. Heard something of it, have you? Well, from what I've seen, there's little you could do to interfere, so there's no harm in telling you. One of our scouts spotted a hooded man issuing instructions to the afflicted. Or in the bastard's words, loyal servants of the Talafaroi. Then he made his way inside the Imperial Palace or what stands in its place. We identified the seat of the enemy's power. We realized Lord Quintus dispatched a messenger to the... 10th Legion saying as much and instructing them to join forces with the Provincial Legions to prepare for a combined assault on the Tlaferoi. Once our allies arrive, your contingent will be sent running for the hills. Then we shall reclaim the capital by our own hand. And how do you intend to survive in the meantime? At this rate, many of your countrymen will perish long before reinforcements reach Garlemald. They need help now. Say the word and we will bring this use Cerulean. I will speak with Lord Quintus. So, did he agree to it? No, he will not place Garland Mold in the dead of her enemies. I have, however, been ordered to search for Cerulean outside. As you are under my watch, you will come with me. Very well. After all, many hands make light work. You lot are more trouble than you're worth. Once we're outside, you'll follow my instructions to the letter. We depart shortly. We will begin our search for Cerulean in Regio Urbanistima. The first location is Forum Solis, a park to the southwest of this station. You are to remain close at all times and act only as ordered. Follow me. So this is the park. I'm surprised they found space for one amongst all these buildings. Actually, the rec recreational areas came first. The houses were later built around them. A healthy re society requires communal spaces for, spaces for children to play and adults to socialize. This park was named after the founding father of the empire, the great Solus Zos Galvis. Did we come to extract Cerulean for the wrecked Magitech armor? No, we've already drained it dry. Same goes for the rest of the Machina in the vicinity. But, as our Cerulean has been stolen, we must scour the city for every last drop. And while I don't expect to find anything here, I've decided to try one more time in case something has been overlooked. I see. Then, with your permission, we will commence the search.
tracks memories of Final Fantasy VII. Oh, it's you. Any luck? There's no sign of any ceruleum. Hardly surprising, but disappointing nonetheless. I couldn't help noticing you grazing gazing at the pond. Is something the matter? What? Yes, I mean, no. I'm... It's just I used to bring my bro brother and sister here to play. The pond was heated to stop it from freezing over, so like all the other children, they just had to wade in and splash about. Would have stayed there if I hadn't dragged them out. We'd be st soaping wet when all was said and done every time. And every time we'd get home, my mother would scold us, saying we'd catch our death walking around like that. The pond was heated. With a cerulean-powered heater by chance... I suppose it must have been. Come to think of it, I remember seeing engineers changing out a tank beneath that, beneath the hatch. But that was a long time ago, when the water still flowed clear and wasn't this brackish muck. We can't say a thing. I can't remember where the, ha the hatch might be. The machinery most likely broken. The amount of filth in there is probably the only reason it hasn't frozen over. I'd wager it's still unbearably cold, though. Julius, what are your thoughts on magic? The average garling would jump out of their skin if they saw it, but the f last, but the first has a few foreign signifieri and med medici, so it doesn't scare me. Then I take you won't mind if I employ a little now. Elf knows you have a knack for finding dry wood. Why don't you bring me some? Once that's done, a blaster verifier should do the trick. Leave it to me. You're not planning to go in there, are you? Of course I am. That tank isn't going to fetch itself. It's something so involved as extracting unprocessed ceruleum from a frozen frozen lake, like how the tappers do it. We're talking about a shallow pond in a park, and we have a way of warming ourselves up after. But that's insane. So fancy a dip? If you're that concerned for my well-being, you can dive in and help me. Look, the quicker we find that ceruleum, the sooner we can get out of here. Do you find anything? I hope you did. That's it. 
and there's still some ceruleum left. Ah, the fire's still not ready. Hold on, I'll give Elf no hand. Call me an old on because by fire I'm reborn and my clothes are mostly dry now, too. I appreciate your recovering this ruling, but I wish you'd taken the time to discuss the plan with me beforehand. Despite the way you've been treated in Lord Quintus's eye, you're still the envoys deserving of protection. If you were to die on my watch, he would be most displeased. Your concern is duly noted, but all's well that ends well. Julius, you mentioned coming here with your younger siblings. Did you grow up in Garlemald? I did, not far from here. My father was an accomplished researcher in his youth, and for his contributions to the Empire, Empire Ward and Estate, we lived well, better than many. What was Garlemon like in those days? Everything it was everything you could imagine, so much more. Even during the coldest nights, we always found warmth and comfort at home. Coming in from the snow, you taking off your, your coat and sitting down for a hot meal with family. Visiting, visiting friends and relatives receiving that same welcome, knowing they had everything they needed. Walking down the street, seeing the lights in all the houses, hearing the faint sounds of laughter and song of happiness. And although the summers came and went all too quickly in that brief respite, the ice would melt and the forgotten grass make its triumphant return. Gray clouds gave way to blue skies. Some mornings we'd climb to the top of the tallest buildings we could find to watch the sunrise. Never again. Those rooftops are rubble, those friends dead, and those memories. But if I could reclaim even a fraction of what we once had, soon our chance will come. We just need to hold on a little longer. Now that the fire is burned out, Julius is ready to move on. All right, now that you've recovered from your escapades in the pond, there's another location I'd like to search, just outside the park. As you can see, this place is littered with the remnants of various types of war machina. While well, my comrades and I have already recovered the tanks from the less damaged units, those that took a more severe beating are harder to scavenge. We decided to save those for another time, that time being now. Rather than prize them apart piece by piece, it would be quicker to remove the outer casing using compact explosives. With luck, we'll gain access to the tanks without rupturing them. Though the force generated by those devices is relatively weak, I would, should advise you to stand well clear to avoid being hit by any shrapnel. Before even bothering, though, you should check the Machinus Rillium gauge to see if there's any left. It should still provide an accurate reading even when the unit itself is inactive. If the gauge is broken, I'll let you decide whether to use an explosive or not. If you need more, come to me. Understood. Let's get to work. Empty.
empty as well. More explosives. Wait, is that what I think it is? You're not getting truly luck is on our, on your side. This should be able to refuel quite a few of our heaters. So I'm head back. Wait here while I go and see how Alice and Alpha are faring.
Alpha and Alpha will be fine, providing they do not resist. Once again, Julius has been trusted with an unenviable task. You will accompany me back to your camp where I'll meet with your leader and present Lord Quintus's demands. Before we depart, however, there is something I would ask of you. Assuming your contingent complies, the supplies they surrender will need to be transported here. That task falls to Legionnaires Mar Marcellinus and Octavia, who will pilot Mahajitech armor to your headquarters. You are to inform them that we are leaving shortly. Tell them to ask the ill for further details in those words. Once you've seen to that, meet me by in the exit. You again. Ask the eel, he said. <laughs> so that's to be the way of it after all this. How ironic that you should be the one to deliver the news. If those are to be my if those are my orders, then so be it, for the glory of Garlemald. What do you want with me? Ask the eel, so Lord Quintus has reached a decision. I knew he would understand that he would recognize the savage as a ruthless, merciless creature, and to defeat him, we too must be uncompromising. I am ready. In the name of Lord Emperor Varus, for the glory of Garlemald, I will fulfill my duty. In other words, I'm guessing that it's in order to go kamikaze. At least that's my best guess at what that what that means. Have you done as instructed? Duty is rarely a simple thing. We have been given additional orders, though whether we will be required to follow them depends entirely on your contingent. You and I are in this together now. Like it or not, we have to cooperate. There is one other matter, a place I'd like to visit on the way to your camp. It's a short walk from here. Follow me.
Really?
Oh, really? Well, he definitely did something rash. Much and more has occurred since last we met. As for determining what comes next, we must speak with Lord Quintus. Before we proceed, tell me what you know of the First Legion and the d disposition of their forces. They are preparing for war while the refugees in their care were left to go hungry. A reckless, short-sighted plan that risks the welfare of the people they are sworn to protect. Nevertheless, we cannot compel them to accept our aid. If we were to arrive in force with the in intent to do so, we would only incite panic, but perhaps they can be persuaded to follow one of their own. Go with Julius back to the station. Have him lead the refugees here. Some may be unwilling to or unable to leave, but for the time being, I'll take what I can get. Alphano, Alice, and the scouts sent to extricate them should be already be at the station. I will also have other comrades in the area lend their support should it be needed. Understood.
There we go. Illusion and Julius. We arrived just before you did, and too late. Too late for what? What's happened? It's Lord Quintus. He took his own life. After the news about the tenth, he relieved us of our duties. Then, when he was alone, he... No, no, he wouldn't. Thancred and the others, assisted by the soldiers, have seen to the remains. In due course shall the Legatus be afforded a proper burial. He released us from our duty. He wanted us to be free, free to choose our own fate. Without him to guide us, we're... I... I have just this moment spoken with Lucia. We are ready to commence the transfer of the refugees here to Camp Broken Class, should they be willing to accept our aid. Some would rather die. But most of us just want to live. Songs and standards be damned. We just want to live. We'll need to speak with the refugees. They'll have to decide for themselves if they wish to come with us. They would prefer to say we can have supplies brought over for them. It'll be a hard journey for the others, but we'll see they reach our camp safely. I, I... It was only of our dream, wasn't it? To think we would reclaim it, rebuild it all ourselves? Before this all began, I sent my wife and daughter away to the provinces. If there's a chance I might see them again, I'll take it. So take me. Take me with you, please. Well, I got the Aetherite Sword in the end. All it took was a few adjustments, and now it works as well as it ever did. From what I can tell, the one in the latter room was also functioning as normal. That's where you lot are staying, isn't it? Now that most of us are packing up and leaving this place, everything will be more use for me and my skills over at your camp. Ah, oh, it's you, the one who treated me with such kindness. I heard from the others that you're not from around here. I thought you were one of us, not that it makes much difference now. Pure bloods, migrants, savages, after a while the words start to lose meaning until all you're left with is anger and fear and hate, and I'm... I'm too tired. If you and yours have come to offer aid, I'd be glad to accept. We have much to discuss. Our rescue, the attack on Camp Broken Glass, what we'd hoped to talk about with Quintus. But all that can wait. My urgent matters demand our attention. Are any of the ref refugees willing to come to our camp? Thank the Twelve. Thank the Twelve.
You and I should go first and secure the route back to Camp Broken Glass. With all the creatures and tempers calling about, I expect we'll have our hands full. This should come in handy. Conqueror's chain, courtesy of our limits and friends. I'd save it for the tempered, though. I'll mark a few points that need surveying on your map. Once you've taken care of the riffraff, we'll meet you back at our camp.
Okay. Ah, there you are. As expected, I ran into a few beasts and went down without much of a fight. The temper proved somewhat troublesome, but those chains should keep them under control. Until our allies take them into custody. With that taken care of, I'm to gather a few supplies and return to the station. While I see to that, would you mind surprising Lucia of our progress? As it happens, I have some other, some rather pertinent information from our recent scouting forays. But I'll save that for later. First things first and all that. Ah, I was informed of Quintus's suicide. It must have come as a great shock to his men. For the refugees, I'm told some were receptive to our proposal, but I would hear your first-hand account. That so many did not hesitate to accept proves how desperate their situations would come. We'll do our best to make them feel welcome. The troops who participate in the ambush are no exception. They will be afforded the same treatment as any other refugees. Perfidy notwithstanding, after all, even if I want to make an example of them, there's no one left to learn from it. We will tell our allies that these soldiers were un acting under the direct orders of Legatus, and that following his suicide, they offered a full and unconditional surrender. Perhaps Quintus thought that he had lived, he would be tried as a war criminal, and his men punished with him. Perhaps by taking his own life, he hoped to absolve them of any culpability. Or perhaps, like too many others, he was a true believer to the end. Who can say? I didn't know the man or his heart. His reasons, no or otherwise, died with him. And it falls to us to clean up the mess. Lucia has further news for you. I assume you're curious about how matters have progressed here in your absence. Quite well, as it happens. Now that we've procured cerulean from Ta Tapper's Den, the recently repaired heaters can provide much needed warmth. Furthermore, if we prepared sufficient food for everyone, those from Tertium shall find a hot meal waiting upon their arrival. There's one for you, so go ahead and get some well-earned rest. I believe that we're capable of yielding a la late or two without your assistance. On your way, might I ask you to seek out Ishtola? She was but recently attending to the wounded. But she's meant to be taking a rest herself. See that she is. Yes, yes, I've been taking proper breaks and imbibing sufficient water, but what are the way you lay? You and the twins have an established history of reckless disregard for your own well-being. We're all, f we're all fortunate that none of you landed yourselves in my care. I've already quite enough to deal with. Between the tempered and the first wounded, alas, though I can mend their bodies, the toll their experiences have taken on their hearts and minds is another matter altogether. For their sakes, we must not waver, but nor must we rush ahead in eagerness to see the day one. And in so doing, invite disaster.
Hey, it's changed colors again.
I'm all for disappointing him. But I guess that's just my thoughts.
surprised he doesn't tell you just shut up. So I gotta fight myself, son of a bitch! What would be more interesting if you put me in his body?
Fuck me. Shit. See if I can't run them off. Ooh. Minoka kit doesn't help me any. God damn it.
get off of me. Hey, but I wasn't having to deal with these two idiots. Gotta help the people. I mean, it takes time, yeah, but it's the right thing to do.
It's a long ways to crawl.
You're certain you're well. Nothing out of place? No missing bits? Good, though I won't promise the same for Fandaniel and Zenos after I'm through with them. How much must these people suffer before they're satisfied? How many cruel, pointless tricks must they play? Prelude to the final days or no. This ends now. And well, that'll be it for tonight's stream. We'll be back tomorrow with uh, probably Yakuza 4.